ASME BPVC Section 5 is one of the popular codes of ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code. This code deals with non-destructive methods of examination, its procedures and requirements. Non-destructive means the examination methods in this code will not make the part unusable for its intended purpose after the examination. Welcome to Module 6, Part 1 of API 570 Piping Inspector Exam. As per BOK, the following are covered from Article 1 in API 570 Piping Inspector Exam. Article 1 is General Requirements. The inspector should be familiar with and understand the scope of Section 5, rules for use of Section 5 as a reference code, responsibilities of the owner, user and of subcontractors, calibration, definitions of inspection and examination, record keeping requirements. A note is also given in the BOK regarding the syllabus. The note says the examination will cover only the main body of each referenced article except as we stated above. Main body means there are many subsections for each article. Those subsections are not in exam syllabus. What is the difference between an inspector and an examiner? This diagram is based on a client contractor concept in a construction site. Client does inspections through an inspector. Subcontractor does inspections through examiner. Hope you understand the functional differences of an inspector and examiner. Inspection and examination. Article 1 describes it as inspection applies to the functions performed by the inspector. Examinations apply to those quality control functions performed by personnel employed by the organization. Requirements for an inspector. Inspector shall be as defined and qualified as required by the referencing code section or referencing document. There are no requirements for an inspector that are laid down by this code. Defining requirements are left to the referencing code or document. Requirements for an examiner. There is nothing mentioned specifically for examiner, but requirements for an NDT NDE personnel is specified. What is the definition given for examination? Examination applies to those quality control functions performed by personnel employed by the organization. Is NDT a quality control function? Yes, NDT is a quality control function, NDT or NDE. So we can say that NDE personnel is an examiner or we can say non-destructive examination personnel are an examiner as he does quality control functions. Are you an examiner or inspector? From the above definitions, you can define your role in your organization. Scope of Article 1 Article 1 contains requirements and methods for non-destructive examination. These NDE methods are intended to detect surface and internal imperfections in materials, wells, fabricated parts and combs. The NDE methods are radiographic examination, ultrasonic examination, liquid penetrant examination, magnetic particle examination, eddy current examination, visual examination, leak testing and acoustic emission examination. New editions of Section 5 may be used from the beginning with the date of issuance and become mandatory six months after the date of issuance unless modified by the referencing document. This statement is highly important from a project point of view. If your project document mentions to use latest edition of the code, later is to be followed. As a mandatory requirement, the new edition is to be used at least after six months of its issuance. It is also seen that 
project documents mentions a particular addition of code as a requirement. Example, addition 2017 of SME section 5 is to be used. Then there is no need to follow 2019 edition even after the six months of its issuance. This is a very good method for projects which spans three or more years. In between, if there is a new issuance of the code, then also it will not affect the project inspection and documentation, if any such changes are in the new edition. Article 1 of SME BPVC Section 5 is Subsection A of Non-Destructive Methods of Examination. Reference to a paragraph of Subsection A includes all the subparagraphs and subdivisions under that paragraph. Reference to subsection B is mandatory only to the extent specified. This is an important point regarding what it means to when references are there to subsections A and B. Qualification of NDE personnel. The qualification of NDE personnel according to Article 1 can be easily understand from this diagram. The diagram can be read in this way. If the referencing code is not specifying qualifications, then qualification may simply involve a demonstration to show that the personnel performing the non-destructive examinations are competent to do so in accordance with the organization's established procedures. If referencing code specifies to refer Article 1, then qualification shall be in accordance with their employer's written practice. The points that are to be noted here are one is organization's established procedures and the other is employer's written practice. Don't be confused with both these. The organization's established procedures are followed when the referencing code is silent or if it does not mention Article 1 for qualification. The written practice is followed when the referencing code mentioned to do so. Employer's written practice. Written practice shall be in accordance with SNT TC 1A 2006 edition or ANSI SNT CP 189 2006 edition. SECP or ISO 9712 2012 edition based programs may be alternatively used instead of the above two documents. For computer radiography, that is CR, digital radiography, that is DR, phased array ultrasonic, that is PAUT, or ultrasonic time of flight diffraction, that is TFD, Article 1, Mandatory Appendix 2 shall also be included in the employer's written practice for each technique as applicable. The user of the article is responsible for the qualification and certification of NDE personnel. The interesting thing that is to be noted here is Article 1 mentions the year of those publications that are to be followed. The 2006 year edition of SNT TC1A is to be followed. This is not the latest edition of SNT TC1A. Same is for the other documents also. Please note that the year of the edition of SNT TC1A or ANSI SNT CP189 is not the latest edition. Remember, the latest edition is to be is not to be followed. The edition to be followed is what is mentioned in this document. Here it is of 2006 edition. The organization's quality program shall stipulate how this is to be accomplished. Qualifications in accordance with the prior edition of SNT TC1A or CP189 are valid until recertification. Recertification or new certification shall be based on addition specified in clause T120E. Any limitations or restrictions placed upon a person's certification shall be described in the written practice and on the certification. Please note that until recertification, the qualifications according to Previous editions of SNT TC1A or CP189 are valid. 
please note the third point recertification or new certification shall be based on addition specified in T120E. It is not mentioned that latest addition of SNT TC19 is to be followed. It specifies that we have to follow what is written in the clause T120E. The point is to be remembered. Usage of units. One system shall be used consistently throughout for all phases of construction. The US customary units and SI units shall be used independently of the other without mixing. US customary units that do not contain SI values shall be converted to at least three significant figures. All phases means from the planning phase to the closing phase of a project, same system of units are to be used. If SI units and US customary units are given, conversion from one to the other is not accepted. If SI units are not given, then convert the US customary units to three significant digits of SI unit. Requirements for an examiner. There is nothing mentioned specifically for examiner, but requirements for an NDT, NDE personnel is specified. Examination Procedure When required by the referencing code section, NGE shall be performed following a written procedure. A procedure demonstration shall be performed to the satisfaction of the inspector. Written procedure shall be made available to the inspector on request. At least one copy of each procedure shall be readily available to the NTE personnel for their reference and use. If required by the referencing code, the ability of the examiner is to be established by demonstration of the examination as per written practice. The written procedure is needed when required by the referencing code section only. Remember, the written procedure is needed when required by the referencing code section only. The copy of written procedure shall be with the NDE personnel and the written procedure shall be made available to the inspector if he requests. Special procedure. Whenever special configurations or materials require modified methods and techniques, the organization shall develop special procedures which are equivalent or superior to the methods and techniques than in the code. A procedure demonstration shall be performed for such developed procedures. The special procedures shall be submitted to the inspector for acceptance when required by the referencing code section and shall be adopted as part of the manufacturer's quality control program. Here, the point to be noted is the written procedure is not required to be approved by inspector, but for special examination procedures, approval from inspector is needed if it is mentioned in the referencing code section. In both cases of written and special examination procedures, procedure demonstration is needed based on referencing code requirement. Procedure establishment. It is the responsibility of the organization to establish NDE procedures and personal qualification and certification procedures conforming to the referenced documents. Procedure qualification. It shall be qualified by performing a demonstration examination. How the demonstration of examination procedure is to be done? Under the control and supervision of a level 3 examiner, that is called supervising level 3, and shall be witnessed by the inspector, shall be performed by a level 2 or level 3 examiner, other than supervising level 3. The procedure shall be considered qualified when the supervising level 3 and the inspector are satisfied. The qualification demonstration shall be documented. The qualification document shall be unordered to indicate qualification of the written procedure and identify the examined specimen. 
the name and or identity and signature of the supervising level 3 and the witnessing inspector shall be added to indicate their acceptance of the procedure qualification. Two terms to be noted. Here are the supervising level 3 and examining level 3. Performance of the procedure can be done by a level 2 or level 3 that also to be noted. Specimen for procedure establishment. On a minimum of one test specimen is needed for procedure establishment. Floor size, location, orientation, quantity and character station shall be determined prior to the demonstration and are known only by the supervising level 3 examiner. Please note that it is only known only by the supervising level 3 examiner. The maximum acceptable floor size, required floor orientation and minimum number of floors shall be as specified by the referencing code section. Natural flows are preferred over artificial flows whenever possible. Two main points are minimum one specimen is needed and the other is natural flows are preferred in a specimen. The flow details are known only to a supervising level 3 examiner. Article 1 of SME BPVC section 5 is subsection A of non-destructive methods of examination. Reference to a paragraph of subsection A includes all the subparagraphs and subdivisions under that paragraph. Reference to subsection B is mandatory only to the extent specified. This is an important point regarding what it means to when references are the calibration. The equipments used for the examination are to be calibrated. It is the responsibility of the organization to ensure that for special procedures, the code user shall specify what calibration is necessary and when calibration is required. For special procedures, both that is what and when calibration is needed is to be specified by the code user. Evaluation Acceptance criteria in the referencing code section shall take precedence. The code does not give any acceptance criteria for discontinuities. Records and documentation. Records or documentation is prepared as per referencing code section. Examination records shall include date of examination, name and or identity and certification level for personnel performing the examination, identification of weld part or component examined including weld number, serial number or other identifier. Examination method, technique, procedure identification and revision are also needed. Results of the examination are to be on the record. Retention period of records documentation. The retention periods of records are to be as referencing code section. Digital images and reviewing software shall be retained under an appropriate record retention system for the time period specified in the code section. An interesting point is that the reviewing software also to be retained. Procedure establishment. It is the responsibility of the organization to establish NDE procedures and personal qualification and certification procedures conforming to the referenced documents. Procedure qualification. It shall be qualified by performing a demonstration examination. Special procedure. Whenever